Uh, let's go ahead and start, and we'll start with we'll start with Andre Boyd. And Andre, I'll ask him to read the first one, and then we'll go to Andre Green, and then Irene, and then we'll go back to Andre, unless somebody else. Comes in. So let's go ahead and start. Mm -hmm. Uh, can I begin? Yes, please. Yes, please. Today in history, April 5th, 19, uh, 1986, a bombing at a disco in what then West Berlin kills an American soldier and a Turkish woman. The United States related detailities uh, more than a week later with uh, an air raid on Libya, not only missing uh, its leader, Maul Gaddafi. Great job. Andre? Okay. 1964. Old soldiers never die. They just fade away. General Douglas MacArthur dies in Washington at age 84. MacArthur led U.S. forces in the Pacific during World War II and the Korean War also overseeing the occupation of Japan. Very good. And let's do, Irene, can you do the next two? Yeah. 1956. 19. Booker T. Washington, the African American. What? 1856. 1856, yeah. <laughs> 1856, Booker T. Washington, the African American educator who founded the Tusky G. Institute is born in Franklin County, Virginia. Next one, too. Uh, 1972. Reclusive Recl billionaire Howard Hughes died at age 72 while being flown from Acapulco, Mexico into Houston to seek medical treatment. Very good. And we have Irina. Irina, can you read the next one? 1986. Karim goes in. A skyhook score. Karim Abdul-Jabbar becomes the highest scoring player in NBA history. A record which he holds to this day. Great job. Irina, where is your husband? Oh, he's working today. Oh, that's not good. Um, let me go back to Andre Boyd then for the last one. One second. And 2006. Sometimes I think change is a good thing. Kate Curie says uh, she is leaving NBC's Today Show to become anchor of the CBS. In the news, she is the first woman hired to be the solo anchor, anchor of a network evening newscast. Great job. Very good. Very good. Let me go back here to Andre. Is it bombing or bombing? Bombing. Bombing. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And here intonation. In what's then West Berlin. In what's then West Berlin. In what's then in what's then West Berlin. More S. More S. In what's in what's then West Berlin. Good job. Good job. What was St. Petersburg was old, old names? Leningrad? Leningrad? Leningrad is old names, yes. So, we could say, so we could say uh, if something uh, happened, when did the St. Petersburg name change? Uh, it was, uh, if uh, I do, I, I'm not mistaken, uh, in 1994, 1991 first. Okay, so, okay, so. And in 1986, we could say, and what's then Leningrad? Ah, it, it was then Leningrad. There you go. So where were you born, Andre? I was born in a small city in Belarusia. It's called uh, Hoyniki. It's a uh, um, Gomel district of Belarusia area. Gomel area of Belarusia. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, let's say, uh, to, to simplify matter, uh, let's just say Gomel or just Belarusia. Belarusia. Okay, good, good. Um, I think, Irene, you are also from St. Petersburg, right? Yeah. Were you born in St. Petersburg? No, I was born in Germany. Are you, you're born in Germany? Yeah. Okay, East Germany or West Germany? 
East Germany. Very good. So I was born, and what year were you born? What? What year were you born? 1986. Okay, so in 1986, I was born in what's then East Germany. Say that sentence. In 1986, I was born in what's then East Germany. Very good, very good. So this is, this is actually a, a convenient expression, uh, especially when dealing with uh, Europe, especially Eastern Europe, because I know lots of uh, names uh, of the countries have changed. The same thing in uh, uh, Southeast Asia, too, especially Vietnam. Uh, lots of the names uh, have changed, even for the countries and the cities, uh, since the, the 1960s. Very good. Let me go back to Andre Boyd. Andre, did you study DDM-107? I very ashamed, but I didn't. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this word is retaliate. Retaliate. Very good. And get your th with an air raid. With an air. Air raid. With an air. Air raid. Air raid. Perfect. Good. All right. Let me go to Andre Green. Now you're stopping your pronunciation at the mic. MacArthur, okay? But actually, Andre, the K comes over, so it's MacArthur. Oh, okay. MacArthur. Very good. MacArthur. And like one word, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. And in the Pacific. In the Pacific. There you go. American pronunciation is usually P Pacific. P Pacific. P Pacific. In the Pacific. Perfect, perfect. And the occupation of Japan. The occupation of Japan. Exactly, perfect. And who's next here? Irene's. I think you said educator. Yeah. Um, and it's more of a J, educator. Educator. There you go. And Irene, you did not study DDM 107 too, right? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can tell. Tuskegee. Tuskegee. There you go. Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes. There you go. Perfect, perfect. And Irina did great. Ah, and let me just go back to Andre Boyd again. Uh, the yeah. Network uh, the Evening network Newscast. Newscast. Perfect. News Newscast. There you go. And that is it. That is it. Questions. Questions. Yes, Shane, I have a question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, well, Andre, please Andre, mute, your mic, please. mute your mic, please. Thank you. Go ahead, Andre. And this expression, what's then? In this, what's uh, then? contraction, in what's then? This contraction, uh, See. Yes. Is it is or was? Is. It's always is? Not always, no. Uh, it can be was, but in this case we use it as is. So it's a little bit strange. Yes. Because what is, it's the present, and then it's past. I know. Right? I know. It's, it is confusing. Um, and there's another case. Uh, where is it? Uh, dies. What's interesting about the history is is we go back and forth from past tense to present tense. It's very common to do that. Um, but in what's then, when AP says it, they mean is and what is then and what is then. And you'll find uh -huh. that too. Uh, if, you, if you do a Google search of in what is then, you'll find that uh, a lot. And I, I agree, it, it seems kind of awkward, um, but the idea is we are presently in the past, but we're mm -hmm. emphasizing that it has changed. Okay. Yeah, I agree. It is confusing. Uh, how about pronunciation? Because the speaker, and I think there are, some, there are some speakers, maybe a lot of speakers, who 
instead of what says quo. Instead of where, I sometimes hear where. Yeah, I so. think I think that's more of a British thing than it is an American thing. Um, but I do agree. I have heard in what's then, and it, it seems to me to be a little bit British. Um, mm -hmm. Let me ask if Santa is there. I know Santa is uh, in the UK right now. Does that seem? Have you ever heard a professor or anybody use the W H as kind of an H sound? Santa, can you type a message there if you're there? I'm just curious. Yeah, uh, but I don't think it's a British thing. Okay, yeah, so maybe it is a, a kind of a personal thing. Um, war, uh, war. Yeah, I'm thinking about my grandma. My, my grandma's from Ireland, um, and she never did that. But yes, I think mm -hmm. it's rather rare, and uh, some people do it but it's not common and I don't know where it would be if it's maybe it's Northeast America maybe I'm not sure where have you heard it and in, in this in this podcast I, I, I heard a slight H sound oh in this in story dance. yes if you if you uh, so kind to play it again yeah and listen to it Second. So in the very first one, right? Right. April 5th, 1986. A bombing at a disco in what's then West Berlin. Yep, I heard it too. In what's then? In what's then? I, I totally agree. Um, I didn't notice the first time, but I would say that it's not common um, and I don't know why he did that maybe that's his style mm -hmm. my recommendation is not keeping the age yes because it's a uh, it's a think more difficult yeah it without is. age is much much better smoother I would say it's easier that's right easier right I do agree. and the second question um, Narrowly missing its leader, right? Yes. Uh, I'm thinking about this this construction and liaisons and you know this blending sounds. Uh -huh. Can I say narrowly missing its leader, missing its leader, or missing a leader? Uh, no, I you, mean, you you gotta keep the s. Uh, missing its Missinous leader is definitely yeah. possible, but you have to keep the S. Missinous leader. Okay. Missinous leader is possible. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but but these are strong sounds, S and L sound, right? Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, but the strong sounds, my my recommendation is always keep the strong sounds. Uh, even if there's two strong sounds next to each other, uh, if they're similar you can combine uh, mm -hmm. but you know like S S H you can combine but S and L they're all distinct they're all quite different so keep all three okay Sergey uh, just left a message saying that he noticed the W H H down too oh that's great I you know it's funny I never even noticed so I'll pay attention <laughs> to that in the future I think shame because you are used to it. <laughs> I, it <laughs> right, just... you're right, Andre. I, it's like whatever. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? Uh, I, I would like to share this thought with everybody. When you, when I listen to this uh, podcast, and you know I, I um, make make mistakes, and then I watch uh, the answer DDM answer video, uh -huh. and it's something like my brain when I hear something so my brain probably tries to relate what I hear with something it already knows and very often it is mistaken so I think it's a good 
maybe technique to stop thinking when we listen to some difficult parts or unknown part. Just stop thinking and just take in the pure sound. What do you think about that, Shane? I think it's a great idea. What I like to tell students is when you're, when you're dictating a sentence, if it seems really difficult, take a step back. And what that means is stop thinking. Just listen to the sound. You know, imagine the situation, listen to the sound. So when I say take a step back, that is the same thing as stop thinking. Another good piece of advice is stop listening. And then an hour later or the next day, come back and try it again. And it, that often helps too. But that's great advice, Andre. Stop thinking. I, I totally agree. Yes, because after your explanation, uh, you know, I often, you know, say, say to myself, how couldn't I miss that? It was so easy. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. So I try to listen this fragment, this part, many times to, to get used to it, to get used to the sound. That's great. Are you repeating the sounds too? Yes, definitely. Yeah, that's so All the missing points I repeat. That's great. Uh, That's basically great. everything I, I repeat, but pay special attention to the missing part. That's great. How did you do on DDM 109, Andre? The, 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 for me, it was great, but <laughs> again, I missed some obvious, you know, some obvious expressions, and then when I, when you explained that in the video, I feel ashamed, you know, <laughs> it was so easy and. I heard it many times, and the last uh, were buddies, were buddies for now. Right. And I, I, I heard robotics. Yeah, robotics. <laughs> it right. suits to the yes, but that's you know it, it, it's one of those moments that you have your own. You see a see a light, but until it's too late. <laughs> that's that's what was so interesting to me is. Uh, people had a really difficult time with DDM 109, but I'm very curious as to their reaction after I gave them the answers because I think most people will agree, oh my God, how come I didn't hear that? Uh, very similar reaction. Yeah, it's, it's kind of mystery. <laughs> <laughs> But maybe your ideas about this, you know, listen uh, for uh, listen to the same text at some later point in time. Uh, it, it's you start with a fresh brain, you start with right. fresh mind, and you can hear something that you didn't hear before. That's right. That's right. Uh, Santa left a big message here about the H sound, um, and yeah. So uh, it actually uh, originally was spelt with an HW. So originally, uh, like whom, whole, they, we do keep the H. But it looks like some of the other words may have started with an H too. Um, and it, okay, yep. So it is uh, the pronunciation of H is often associated with British upper class. Uh, that that does seem right to me for some reason. So, um, in what's then uh, would be very like the Queen of England. In what's then? So I'm guessing that the reporter, oh, what's his name, uh, Mike Gar Gracia. Uh, I, I'm guessing he's from the northeastern part of America, New England area, and they do have a bit of that uh, British style pronunciation. And it was interesting, somebody was talking about, uh, I can't remember who it was, um, but anyway, he was talking about he had, his wife was from Vermont. And Vermont, New Hampshire, that area in America, has a very aristocratic British accent. They sound very British. And, uh, and he was making comments that speaking with his wife's family 
was like talking with the Queen of England's family. It was very uncomfortable. <laughs> so I think uh, I think that H sound is probably a, a signature of northeastern America and originates in upper class England. I'm showing uh, uh, the general questions. If somebody is, if something is stressed, okay, if there is some syllable that is stressed or some words, so in this case there isn't any any contractions or reductions, right? Because we want Generally, to. Generally, that's right. Yes. Okay. So, for example. If you ask a question, where is this difference? And once you stress on this, and the and the other time you stress on diff. Yeah. So can you can you say say for example, uh, when it is stress on difference, where is this difference? Where is this difference? And um, where it is stress on this, where is this difference? Yeah, I'm going to change it. I'm okay. going to change it to this one. What's the difference? Okay. Um so uh what's what's the, uh should we say this? I'm going to uh So your question is about the TH? And my question was about uh, when I change stress from one syllable to 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 another and is it the case that the reductions disappears? Yes. So once again, in this case, the Z sound generally cancels the TH as we know. So where is this? Where is this? However, if you want to emphasize the word this, then we absolutely keep the TH. Where is this difference? And it's really clear. The TH will become more and more clear. And okay, the, that's the, a, that's the important thing from. Yes, yes. So the so when when people enunciate, and that means speak clearly, um, they they really do overemphasize the pronunciation of uh, all the syllables, uh, and we typically enunciate when we're teaching, explaining, or when we're angry. Uh, these are the three situations where we do enunciate and where our pronunciation reasons, the cancellations, do not apply generally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks a lot. You bet. Shane, can yes. you please explain a bit the word anchor? I don't really understand it in this. Yeah. So the idea of an anchor is with a boat. Do you understand that? Not really. Okay, I'll, I'm going to make a really quick picture. So this is a boat. Oh, yes, I know the, the word anchor, but I don't really understand it. Oh, okay, but what does an anchor do? An anchor goes to the bottom of the water, and what's the function of an anchor? The boat. Yeah, it keeps the boat still. It keeps the boat focused in one area, right? Okay. So it's it's the center point. It's so the boat can spin around, but the anchor stays still, and that's the idea in a news show. The anchor is always there, and it's controlling the news. Okay, so we say anchor for the person who controls the news. Does that make oh, okay. sense? Yes, thank you. Yep. So we can use this expression in a family too. Um, for example, in my family, my dad is the anchor. He maintains reality. He maintains sanity. So when my mom is talking and my sister's running around and I'm thinking about something, my dad is the anchor. Uh, so our family is always secure. Our family is always focused because of my dad. He's the anchor of the family. Okay. 
Okay. And uh, what about the word core? Core of something. You mean core as in C-O-R-E? Yes. That's very similar. Uh, when we talk about the core, usually we we refer to the the most important thing or the main idea. Uh, we don't usually refer to a person as the core, uh, but as the as the idea or um, so, so the core of Apple's business is their iPhone. The core of uh, DDM is pronunciation. Does that make sense? Okay, enter is for the people and the core is for things. Exactly, yeah. You can think like that. Anchors describe a person, usually, um, and cores describe an idea, a concept, a product, something like that. Okay, thank you. You bet. I hear somebody typing frantically in the background. Aha! Uh -huh. Irina, you are typing. <laughs> it's not me, my husband, sorry. Ah, uh, he's <laughs> working, he's working. Yes, okay. a lot. Is he programming? What is he doing? He's programming now. Oh boy, yeah. So when the program so right now, uh, he's in a zone. He's in a programming zone. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. sorry for it. No, that's no problem. No problem. We have we have Andre with his child in the background and Irina with her husband in the background. Yesterday or the day before, we had Holly and her husband was snoring in the background. <laughs> So the background noises are entertaining. And we always have Daniel, Daniel Barbo, and we can hear his cigarette lighter in the background. <laughs> if you want, <laughs> I can. No, Daniel, we don't need it. That's okay. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, that's um, Shane. <laughs> yes. Um, in in the I think previous DDM, uh, Jerry was talking with uh, his well say wife, <laughs> and they were quarreling about can opener. Yeah. And sh and at one point she said, "You want me go find it? You want me to want me to go find it? Yes." And so T is cancel on me, but would you say that M, uh, because we have two consonant N, M, ah. which are very close. So can we cancel one of them? You want me, you want me to go find it or something like that? You know? Okay. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, let me find that. <laughs> Okay, so this is the sentence here. Uh, so as, as everybody knows, the T can be canceled, and we end up with one me, one me. Now, is there additional cancellation? My answer is no. But actually, it is possible for this N and the M. They're similar sounds, so actually they can be connected and in that case, we just keep the second sound. So some people actually might say, Wami, Wami. You want me to go? You want me to go? Okay? Now, yeah. that situation would be very rare, but it is possible. And according to our pronunciation rules, the N combines with the M, and we only keep the M sound. You want me to? You want me to? Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense because uh, it seems to me that she said that. She may something have. Something similar. Yeah. You want me to go? You want me to go? 
Even when I, in my mind, as a native English speaker, even if I say this fast, you want me to go? You want me to go? I'm still pronouncing the N, okay? Um, I'm not exactly sure how you hear it. Listen, listen to my pronunciation. I'll say it three times. You want me to go find it? You want me to go find it? You want me to go find it? Can you hear the N or not? Yes. Okay. There is. There okay. Is, uh, now that, once again, that might be me. And in her case, maybe the N was gone. It's, it's, it is actually possible. I would say it's not, I would say it's very rare, but possible. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. Shame. Yes, Shame. sir. Okay. Thank you. Shame. Yes. Uh, in your explanation uh, about pronunciation of want, want me, you said that we ended up with uh, T sound. And um, why, why, why um, you say so? Why can we say we finished up uh, with T sound? I guess we can't. But, but why? Uh, no, no. What difference? Uh, we and finished. finished up. Fin finished. Finished up with T sound. Yes. We can't. Yes. We can't so say. Yes. Uh, in this situation, Andre, you're gonna keep the T and connect it. Finished up. Finished up. Yes. Yes. I. I just w want to ask you about difference between finished and end. General difference uh, uh, for you as uh, uh, native speakers. I know that uh, I, I never heard, I have never heard uh, uh, that somebody in cases like that um, said uh, uh, finished up. Uh, everybody almost always say end, end it up, end up. Uh, what's the difference? I, I don't understand completely what's the difference. Ah, uh, so you're asking about these two? Yes. Uh, okay. Um, when we usually the situation is different. When we say finished up, it generally means a task has been finished. Okay. Um, ended up refers more to uh, a final result. Um, so um, I started my working career in Korea and 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 ended up in the US so let, excuse me may, may, let me interrupt you may to interrupt you. Go ahead. Uh, very interesting um, uh, very interesting uh, example you you started your sentence sentence we start but finished it with end right. can you can you combine it? End and finish. I, I know. Okay. I, I, I I thought that if you say start, we should finish. If you say begin, we should end. Okay. Let me um, let me finish. I have to make the other sentence. I started my working career. Whoops. In Korea and finished up in the U.S. Now these two sentences are different. Okay, they could be the same, but uh, generally I would say they're different. Can anybody explain the difference between these two sentences? So the key is ended up and finished up. So what, I, I, I think I can. Okay, let me emphasize one I, thing. I think I can, I can explain that. Okay, go ahead. Um, and ended up usually means... Uh, to me, it's something unexpected. So I started my working career, uh, my working career in Korea, but um, surprisingly, I ended up in the U.S. Uh, U.S. and I still uh, continue my career. In okay. the second sentence, this is practically the end, yes. kind of the end of your career. You you don't expect much from your career. Yes. Because you finish up, so it has finished. Exactly. Okay. So you, you made two great points. Uh, the first one, the simple difference is this one probably means still, and this one means finished, retired, done, no more work. Okay? And the other 
excellent point that Andre made is when we say ended up talking about a result, it's kind of an unexpected or unpredicted result. Um, so it, it has this nuance. Not always, but yes, this is a common nuance with ended up. So once again, in this situation, finished up really has the end, the, the no more nuance to it. Ended up doesn't necessarily mean it's finished. It just means a, a temporary or current state. Uh, so it is still continuing. So Andre Boyd, does that make a little bit of sense? Make a little bit of sense? Yes, it, it makes sense, but uh, uh, explanation uh, uh, emphasize uh, a little bit where, where weirdness of English. Uh, you said that finished means end, <laughs> and end means finish. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm running out of vocabulary. <laughs> why end mean, why end don't, doesn't mean end? <laughs> It's a, it, your question is absolutely fair. I, I cannot give you a good answer, but uh, yeah. Uh, the end is not the finishing point, but finishing is the end. <laughs> English is terrible. English thank you. sucks. By the way, thank English you for explanation. Terrible. English sucks. Thank you, thank you for explanation. It's make uh, de this uh, deal uh, more clear, clear for me. Good. Clear. I, and, and once again, I, I recommend again. going to Google and, uh, and searching and, and just looking for places in the news and in personal blogs where they talk about ended up, where they talk about finished up. And I think we use them often the same. But sometimes they are used differently, and this is generally the difference that you'll see. Yeah, good questions. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and I'm going to jump in here. Okay, we'll go ahead and I'm going to jump in. We're going to do uh, DDM 108. Uh, let me re-blackify this. Get rid of all my... Uh, editing points and uh, let's go to the uh, the top and we got the first scene here is uh, Greg and Elaine so I would like to have Irina be Elaine and Daniel Barbo be Greg are you guys ready okay Actually, you guys, I, I apologize. Please, please give me... Well, hold on a second. I can't. Okay, guys, go ahead. Uh, please start. I'm glad you're here. This can get really boring. You know where I can get some... Good, all of us. I can see love. Would you? Sure. Oh, a project. That's a different signal. <laughs> you know, by the way, you know, by the way, you look really great in that leotard. Oh, thanks. That's no signal. Who would like me in this leotard? I look amazing in this leotard. <laughs> <laughs> hey! You know what's... Weird. I think I had a dream about you last night. Okay, he often leaves me, he dreams about me, we have an Alea project. That's it, I'm asking this guy out. Um, you know, Greg, I... Can I have a sip of your water? Oh yeah, sure. Thanks. Oh my god. I'm sorry. What were you saying? Oh, it was nothing. Forget it. See that guy right there? Yeah, you mean him? Yeah, I caught him urinating in the shower. I think I'm thinking about turning him into... 
Great job, you guys. Very good. Irina, this was your best acting. Thank you. <laughs> Hold on, just a second. Sorry, guys, just one second. All right. My cats are in places they shouldn't be. Um, let me go back to Irina. I can find out. I can find out. Perfect. Daniel, you know what's weird? Oh, I'm sorry. You know what's weird? Weird. You know what's you weird? Know, you know what's weird? Perfect. Perfect intonation. Very good. Very good. And this one too, Daniel. Uh, what were you saying? What were we saying? What were you saying? What were we saying? What, this is tough. What were you? What were you saying? What were you? What were you saying? Good. Say it again, please. What were you saying? Very good. Now remember, you 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 have to be polite because you uh, Elaine was speaking and then you interrupted. So these kind of go together. Uh, the, this is sort of an apology. Yeah, I'm sorry. What were you saying? Okay? Okay. And Daniel, I know you did not do DDM 108, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are terrible. Excuse me. I'm, I'm very busy with my new I position. know. I know. I know. That's okay. Uh, but what's important is is uh, you do want even though you don't have a chance to study the lesson, I do want you guys to practice, and that's what you're doing. It's very good. Okay, let me go to the next scene here. Um, and here I would like Andre Boyd to be Merrill, Andre Green to be Jerry, and Daniel Barbo to be Morty and Irina to be Helen, and Andre Boyd also be Kramer. Okay? Okay. All right, so we've got everybody. Let's go ahead and start with Andre Boyd, please. Uh -huh. uh, I, I didn't see uh, the text. I don't see the text. You will. Uh. Maybe some, maybe some delay, delay yeah. here. Oh, okay, now I see. Honey, yeah. could you get me something to drink? You're right there. You're right there. Come on, I'm sitting. Honey, what you do with the can opener? Honey, what you do with the can opener? I didn't do anything with it. Well, it's not well, here. It's not here. It was here yesterday. It is in the first drawer. I'm looking in the first drawer. It's not here. Hold on a second. Just wait. Wait a second, guys. Wait a second, guys. Andre. Andre. Yes. Do you, I'm sorry, Andre Boy. Do you have uh, headphones? Uh, yes, I have. I try to use it. Thank you. If it uses headphones, it should improve the uh, audio. A lot of echo. A lot of echo. Lot echo, of echo, 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 echo. Yes, yes, one echo. second, one second. Hello? How about now? Perfect. Yeah, yes. much better. Okay. Uh, and Andre Boyd, start with this sentence again, please. It's in the first drawer. I'm looking in the first drawer. It's not here. Yes, it is. Hey, I'm not stupid. I'm looking in that drawer. There is no can opener. <laughs> Did I say you were stupid? Well, wouldn't I have to be? You tell me there is a can opener in the drawer. I'm looking in the drawer. There is no can opener. What other conclusion could one reach? You want me to go find it? <laughs> yes, I do. You show me where is there is a can opener in that drawer. Hello, I'm sorry, I'm just fighting with my wife. Irina, you're on my you're on mute. Uh, 
I'm totally wrong with him. Jay, we just heard, what's going on? What the hell didn't you tell us? Listen, mom, I was... It, it wasn't here yesterday. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Who is she? When did this happen? I told her that you'd get married. She thought you'd never do it. Marty, you're talk talking too loud. I'm not talking loud. You're touching my eardrum. Well, you must have done something with it. I'm on the phone. Is she there? Can we talk to her? What's her name? Mom, I'm not married. What? I'm not married. <laughs> I knew it, I told you. <laughs> Uncle Leo said. I'm just pretending I'm married to get a discount on dry cleaning. A discount on dry cleaning? Could you make a little more noise? Listen, I'm going to have a call you later. Well, I give up. Well, whoop you. <laughs> Andre, uh, uh, you, you got any coffee? Yeah. Oh, boy. Jeez. I'll get it, I'll get it. Take it easy. Why are you so tired? My guilt uh, is still at the cleaners. Jerry, I can't sleep without my quilt. Uh, like the other night, I was sold. So last night I turned up to heat. Uh, to heat it is uh, uh, too hot. I opened up a window. It's too cold. It's too cold. This one too, Andre. Uh, I can't get in into a zone. What's that? Huh? That. Oh, I forgot. Great job, excellent job. And and Andre uh, Green, you are a true Jerry husband. <laughs> yeah, terrible husband, right? <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. The act it's a typical husband, typical. <laughs> oh, it was great. Uh, let me go to Irina. Everybody did great. It's in the first drawer. Oh, I'm sorry, Daniel. It's, my, it, it, it's uh, my yes. Phrase. Uh, it's in the first drawer. It's in the first drawer. It's in the first drawer. Very good, very good. And this one too? You want me to go find it? You want me to go find it? Great job. You want to make you want me to go find it? Super. And Andre Green, try this one again, please. You show me where is there is uh, again. You show me where there is a can opener in that drawer. Very good. You show me where there's a can opener in that drawer. You show me where there's can opener in that drawer. Very good. Very good. Those are the accented words. Great job. Oh. And this one, it was in here yesterday. Uh, it was in here yesterday. Very good. Good job. Good job. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, that's what I said. Perfect. Perfect. And Irina, eardrum. Eardrum. Yeah, you said eardrum before, but make sure you get that ear. Eardrum. Eardrum. Very good. And Andre, your favorite subject. Ah, yes, yes it is. Well, you must have done something with it. <laughs> very good, very good. Try it again, more natural. Well, you we must have done something with it. Good job. Well, you must have done something with it. Well, you we must have done something, uh, sorry. Well, you we must have done something with it. Very good, great job. Uh, Andre Green, your whoopee woo was perfect. And Andre, Thanks. Andre <laughs> Boyd, you got the second one right, but try the first one again. Quilt, quilt. No, no, no. Quilt, quilt. 
Quilt, quilt, quilt. You know what a kilt is, right? A skirt, a Scottish skirt. Yeah, it's a Scottish skirt for men. So my kilt is still at the cleaners. That actually makes sense. My quilt is still at the cleaners. Good job. My, mm -hmm. TH. Uh, now, be like careful with this. Other, like the other night, I was cold. Like the, like, the other, like the other night, I was cold. So last night, I turned up the heat. It's too hot. So last night, I turned up the heat. It, it's too hot. Very good. So let's do this again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the whole thing, and I want you to repeat, okay? Okay. Like the other night, I was cold. So last night, I turn up the heat. It's too hot. I open up a window. It's too cold. Like the other night, I was cold. So last night, I turn up the heat. It's too hot. I open up a, I open up a window. It's too cold. Very. Sounds much, much better. Very good, you guys. Very good. Questions on Seinfeld. This was utter chaos. This conversation was chaos. Andre Boyd, do you and your wife argue about things like this? Uh, what, what things about? Do like where's the can uh, opener? Where's the where's the spoon? Where's the bowl? Where's the milk? Uh, um, you know, you, yeah, you don't, because uh, my wife is is, uh, is uh, princess or is uh, uh, how to say mm, the queen as a as a as a kitchen as a house. Yes, and I just uh, 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 should uh, um, do what she want <laughs> I, uh, me to do. What she want me to do? <laughs> that's good. That's good. Andre Andre Green, what about you? Yes. Oh, you're single, right? Well, I usually uh, no, actually no. But uh, like uh, uh, Andre, I don't usually, you know, quarrel with my wife sometimes. But I quarrel a lot with my brother because we have a, a garage and we keep all the tools there, and we never can find. We accuse each other of, you know putting the tools somewhere and when I need to do something on my car I never able to find the screwdriver or the spanner or the, this, this kind of thing so <laughs> and we have special special drawers to keep this and they are never there <laughs> so, so you and your brother have this argument all the time yeah it's getting anno annoying you know <laughs> But I, I think we are we are get used to it now. So oh, that's good. That's, that's always good. the case. <laughs> and Irina, do you and your husband have arguments like this? Uh, I think no. Because when I, my husband came into the kitchen straight away, and I kind of stuck in there. So what do you want in there? <laughs> because it's like a like like in my era. So the, so that's your area, so you control it. I don't know what he did there, because he never <laughs> do things like this. So. <laughs> very good, very good. Oh, great. Margarita, do you and your husband argue about what's in the kitchen? <laughs> Every day. Does does your husband say this? Hey, I'm not stupid. Ah, sure. <laughs> and uh, and I always say, and I'm perfect. <laughs> ah, yes, a true, a true couple. Sergey, what about you and your wife? Do you guys argue in the kitchen sometimes? Did you ask me? Yes. Uh, you, you know, Shane, my opinion uh, to this kind of relationship, uh, wife and husband, uh, it's uh, done, you know. Oh, come on, it's not done. This, for some people, this is a loving relationship. Yeah, you, you know, but uh, we need to, uh, yeah, 
we have to find uh, new ways, you know, of relationships. <laughs> yeah, you, you might be right. You might be right. Yeah. You know, and you know, Shane, it's, it's fucking annoying. Yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, looking for a can opener. Come on, boy. <laughs> you know, it, I remember my uh, I have my my grandparents. Um, my mother's grandparents or my mother's parents uh, were very polite. Um, they didn't argue very much. Uh, my grandmother controlled the kitchen. But my father's parents, they would argue about everything. Um, for example, why is the newspaper here? The newspaper should be over here. Uh, who changed the channel on the television? Uh, they would argue about everything, but they were very happy together. Um, and uh, it, was, it was just a total, both of them, the two families, had completely different styles of relationship. But, uh, and, and you, you, you know, Shen, we have a great tendency in Germany. Many, many people, oh, young people, you, you know, they don't get married. Why? They live together. Yeah, and uh, it's maybe the best way. I think I think marriage is a great thing, um, but I think many people, especially nowadays, uh, don't focus on what a relationship is, and I think they're too shallow or too superficial. Um, they have too many wants, and if you're in a relationship, it's not about wanting. It's about giving. Um, so I think that's rare nowadays. Everybody, you know, it's everything is want, 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 want. Um, and a, a good relationship should be give, 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 give. I think. Yeah, it's it's not about giving because it's about uh, sacrificing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, uh, because I think. Yeah, sacrifice to some degree is important, um, but not sacrificing who you are. I don't think that's good uh, because if you if you change if you try to change who you are, usually it's not sustainable. Um, your true self will come out eventually, um, but but sacrificing you know Friday night. For your family, yes, definitely. I mean, if you if if every Friday night you would go drinking beer and playing pool, but then after you get married or after you have children, if you sacrifice Friday night, that's a good sacrifice. Um, so in some in some cases, sacrifice is important. My and, opinion. And you know, in, in in real life, yeah, if you ask some young women, oh, what are you gonna do with your life? Mm, yeah. I'm not. I don't want to uh, really yeah, want to study or do something. Yeah, you you know something for society. But I can get married to and get children and uh, it's okay. You know, it's it's not that. <laughs> it's stupid. Well, yeah, it's. I think there are all different. I I think some people are really different. For example, my sister. Um, she's she's almost 40 and she's single and she's loving her life uh, she's doing what she wants to do complete freedom and I don't think she'll ever get married but other people but she's very independent but other people are not as independent uh, they're more dependent they need somebody they need uh, these uh, they need they need somebody else to to provide yeah. stability. So it's it's just the type of person. Yeah, because uh, they are weak, you know. Weak yeah, people, but yeah. but yeah, I mean, but it depends on on who you are. If you're an independent person, you might think the other person is weak. But but it's but the independent but the dependent person, I don't think they're weak. They're just their mind is wired differently. They're just different types of people. It's the same thing with an animal. 
Um, I have two cats, and one cat is extremely dependent, but one cat is extremely independent, and they're sisters. Um, and it's, it's interesting because uh, one cat will always follow me wherever I go like a puppy dog. And when I come home, the cat is there waiting. Where were you? But the other cat wants nothing to do with me. Uh, always stays away and runs away. Um, just totally different uh, personalities. And I think people are like that too. Um, so um, you might look at a needy cat as weak, but I think it's better to look for a positive adjective and instead of weak, you can say loving or nurturing. Uh, but then you can look at the independent cat and you could say it's very strong because it's independent. But at the same time, you could use a negative adjective and describe it as cold or unempathetic, not caring, something like that. So it, it, I think it depends on the adjectives that you choose to uh, describe somebody and if you use a negative adjective, then that person becomes weak and negative. But if, if you just change your perspective and use a different adjective, it really changes the relationship with that person. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think that the, the depths of the, the dependence and independence are very complex. I think people have to recognize that they're very different and that somebody who's dependent will probably never be independent and somebody who's independent will probably never be dependent i think it's very yeah it, yeah yeah i think it's very relative yeah i think so i agree andre boyd you were going to say something yes 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 thank you uh, uh, when we when you uh, we were discussing uh, uh, with Sergey the uh, sacrificing, I caught my I have caught my, myself on thought uh, that uh, uh, to me for for example uh, the giving uh, to give something and sacrifice something especially in uh, the relationship uh, very different uh, different uh, works very different uh, action. Uh, because yeah. uh, when I give, I give something with pleasure, uh, almost always, uh, to my wife, to my children, uh, and something like that. But suffer, to me, sac sacrificing is something with uh, uh, harm, with pain, maybe, even with pain. It's, uh, I can never f uh, feel the pain, felt the pain when I give something to my wife, for example. Uh, whatever it, it, it was, it can be uh, my time, my free time, my independence, uh, and something like that. But other thing, what I wanted to to say is, it's a little joke about how to create a relationship. It's a really very simple two uh, two step to create a relationship. First of all, you you should buy a ship, and then call call it relation. So you will get a relationship. <laughs> Buy a sheep? Buy a sheep, sheep, yes, me a sheep. Called called its relation. In this case you will have <laughs> <My> a relationship. <laughs> That's so terrible. <laughs> yes, exactly. I like it. I like it. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Personally, I hate relationships. <laughs> uh, I like being uh, independent. Um, but at the same time, when I see uh, a, a good relationship, a strong relationship, uh, it's beautiful. Uh, I really, I think seeing a relationship is. Uh, the only beautiful aspect of humans. I don't like humans, uh, but humans in a positive uh, relationship uh, are truly uh, uh, beautiful. And and there are many dynamics to relationships. Some relationships are very quiet. 
very loving. Some relationships are very loud and explosive, but they work. Um, and uh, it's exciting. It's exciting seeing a good relationship. I do like that. <laughs> Some relationships are business, Santa said. Yeah, I think that's personally, yeah, I, I don't like that. But absolutely, I think many relationships are business and uh, that's not good. Yeah, people marry for money. People marry for social status. People marry for, uh, I don't know, economic reasons is the big one I can think of. Yeah. But anyway, if they're both using each other, go ahead. I'm not interested in, in those people, though. And Shane, can we change a little bit? Absolutely. Subject. <laughs> it's getting philosophical. I know. <laughs> please, please change it. Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, let, what's the difference between that's okay with me and that's okay by me? Same thing. Yep. Same uh, thing. Yep. It's just that's okay with me is much more common. However, that's okay by me, same thing. Okay, sure. and uh, Shane, uh, the last question. Yeah. Uh, the pronunciation, I can't make up, make out the difference between tear, like tear down, tear, and for example, Mary or Terry, if it, if they sound the same. Yeah. Are they, there is some, so. Yeah. They're all the same. Feel? They're all the same. So, so Mary, Mary, Terry, Tear, all the same. So these mm. these all have the air sound. Tear, Tear, Mare, Mare. They all have the same air sound in them. So great. <laughs> yeah. Because I couldn't figure out the difference between them. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's people many people ask about these two. Now, as far as I know, I think I think in Northeast America they do have a slight pronunciation difference between these two, but I don't know what it is. But for the vast majority of Americans, they'll say Merry Christmas and are you married sound the same exactly the same mm -hmm. so why are they different spelled <laughs> this is the a conundrum of english that's right it's a mystery mystery for the ages <laughs> yes from which ddm was that <laughs> uh three or four yeah three or four ago i think yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. Okay, thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. More questions? Okay. I think Andre Boyd had a question. Yes, yes. I have, have, have one question. Uh, uh, recently, I pay, paid my attention to uh, the um, articles, uh, articles, article there. And um, I have trouble with uh, these things, grammar things, uh, as an uh, article. Um, but I thought uh, that I understand something about that until I came across um, the expression, the two world, which you very often we can hear in use. It's, I, I'm talking about global warming. It's something specific when we say global warming, warming, uh, all, uh, almost everybody uh, uh, understand uh, so, so, uh, I realized uh, uh, with this term, uh, um, this term, and uh, this word, uh, something specific. So, something specific. Uh, it's uh, um, thinking of the ozone layer, ozone layer, and uh, pollution, human pollution of environment, and something like that. It's, specific, it's something very, very specific. Why is just global warming? Why, why it, it's not not uh, the the global warming? Okay. Notice, Andre. 
global warming is generally spelt with capital letters, meaning it's mm -hmm. become a proper noun. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's the same thing as, uh, for example, uh, recycling. We don't say the recycling, we just say recycling. Recycling is a good thing. So recycling, it's a noun, recycling is a good thing. Uh, global warming is a bad thing. So we don't use the in this situation because this is considered a, a proper subject uh, that everybody should be familiar with. Now, if we change it, the recycling, oops, recycling is not a capital R. Recycling effort is poor. The global warming issue is important. So if we add a noun after uh, our situation, now we need to add the. In this situation, we have to add the. But uh, for global warming, uh, why is there no the? I don't know if my explanation is good. Can somebody help? I can help. I don't understand. Yes, I think Go ahead, this is a, this is a proper noun. Right. They act like proper nouns, like Shane, you know, like uh, Irene. So we don't need a yeah. uh, definite article because there is one global warming. And this there is, is one gerund. idea of recycling. And this is a gerund, so we don't need an article. Yes, I think that's the best answer. Uh, therefore, Global is specific warming. It's spe very specific warming. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm right. Why? Why we should not use the? Because it's uh, a proper noun. A shame. I th I think uh, global warming also is a germ. Oh. Uh, yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think do, it's not because. Oh, it's both. It's both. Uh, yeah. I think it's not because it's a proper noun. It's because the the verb verb form uh, it's a gerund. Uh, both are gerund. I'm just thinking. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, duh. Yeah, it, this is also a gerund. Um, but is it? But can't we say it as a proper noun too? Um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to take back everything I said about proper noun, and uh, we're going to stick with Jaren. Uh, I'm the, not sure. I I'm think just... you're right. I think you're right, Daniel. I think you're right. Uh, both of you guys, <laughs> Andre. I see very hard questions. It's a difficult question. No, it's, it's a difficult. difficult. This is why I don't teach grammar. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, the basic rule, you can see, can you see, Andre, they're both Jarens, right? Yes, yes, I see. And gerunds do not require an article. And I tell you what, uh, Sh Shane. Yeah. When you use gerund with the preposition of, it takes article. For example, the yes. warming of Africa. Yeah, the recycling and of America, the global warming yes. of yeah, yeah. So you're right. It's not, not probably gerund, but. I will stick to one unique idea that everybody knows, and and you don't need probably Interesting. there. Shame. Uh, uh, what if we 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 will say what if we will uh, we, we what if we say mm, global warming of uh, Earth? Like yeah, Earth. We, then we would say the global warming of the yeah. Earth. Ah. Oh. Interesting. Very interesting, yeah. <laughs> wow, this, Why? This, this is very interesting. Things I've never thought about. Let me let me type that. Hold on a second. Yeah. Once again, if if there's a, a noun after it, uh, issue, hoax, effort, cause, then of course. Um, we we add uh, a the if uh, if global warming 
is followed by of, followed by of, then we would add a the also. Maybe, uh, I have uh, one guess, maybe global warming uh, we should uh, uh, pronounce without the, because it's a kind of uh, global concept, global concept. In this case, it's not something specific, it's just a global concept of uh, warming. Maybe, well, we can, we, can, we can connect it, for example, the global warming of the past 50 years. In that case, we have to say it's a specific period of global warming. Therefore, we need the. So the global warming of America. It's a very specific area. That's why we need the. Uh, the global warming of the past 50 years. It's a very specific time, so we need the. But in general, global warming requires no the because it applies to the whole world. It's what we know. Like you said, Andre, it refers to the ozone uh, pollution. It's uh, actually, it's less specific, actually. It's in general the whole aspect of global warming. So I'm going to get rid of this. And if we make it specific, then it requires the plus of. So I'll write that. I wish I, let me get this on one page. So, uh, the global warming of the past 50 years. The global warming of the U.S. Uh, for example, so in these two cases, global warming now is even more specific. Here it's just in general global warming that we know. It's a gerund, therefore it requires no article. But now it's not general, it's very specific. It's very specific. And because we've made it specific, now we need to add the. And that of preposition makes it specific. Does that make sense, Andre? Yes, makes sense. Uh, so anyway, global is a little bit. Uh, in, uh, anyway, it's uh, it's a little bit specific because it's not local warming. It's not it's not local lo local warming. It's not uh, uh, something else. But it's uh, uh, everybody uh, understand uh, uh, with this term uh, with global war uh, uh, and uh, of uh, global warming is a very specific uh, issue. Very specific issue. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Shane, you know what? Uh, I was listening to what you were saying, and it comes to my mind that the general rule can be that if something is treated as a stuff without boundaries, no article. When something is treated as a thing with boundaries, then you can give it an that article. I like that. Uh, I can say more. I think global warming and uh, recycling touch the universe, universal and global warming of the US is regional and uh, the global warming of the past 50 years is temporal and not universal. Yes, and, and exactly. And that's also what, what Andre is saying. Here we have a boundary the past 50 years, here we have a boundary, the U.S. So with boundaries, we, we require the. Um, yes, they, they touch the universal. Yes, that's right. So here it's without boundaries, it's global warming, unspecifically defined in general, uh, therefore it's no the. Shame. The next my question in this case, what uh, uh, what a degree of specification we should have to use article the. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Any. Bless me. Bless me. Any. Any. Any boundary. It could be. I don't think there's a, any limit, upper or lower limit, as to what the boundary needs to be. Grammar sucks. Okay. Excuse me. Sorry. Sorry about that. 
I just I was confused with this and uh, sorry. No, that's fine. I, I tell you, everybody, if you don't know, Andre uh, has a blog where he writes about many subjects, especially parenting and space technology. And I think it's a really excellent thing uh, what he is doing. So if you uh, are interested in, in following Andre's blog, and I do recommend it, um, go to Twitter. Thank you. And Andre, what's your Twitter account? Uh, probably. Is it FX Pro? Uh, yes, FX Pro. Uh, his Twitter account is FX Pro on Twitter. And uh, if you use Twitter, that's the easiest way uh, to get updates of his uh, blog. It's a uh, it's very good, very good blog. Does, that, does everybody use Twitter? Does every, who doesn't use Twitter? I don't. Why not, Daniel? You're a social butterfly. What's your problem? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Irina, did you say you do not use Twitter? Yes, I don't. Well, I want you to start, and you can follow me and Parmi. I follow only you. And, and smar Parmi Smarmi. Follow Parmi Smarmi is another great one. Everybody needs to follow Parmi Smarmi. Parmi Smarmi has lots of excellent updates. Parmi Smarmi publishes lots of humor, and it's very American, English style humor. So I want you to uh, follow Parmi and see if you can catch the humor. <laughs> You told I follow it. What's that, uh, Irina? You told I follow it. You and everybody. Everybody needs to follow it. Ah, uh, okay. Parmi, if you don't know, is my web bear. Some people have web designers, web managers. I have a web bear. <laughs> and yeah, Parmi Smarmi follows back. Send. Uh, where is your bear? Uh, Par Parmi? I don't, don't remember his name. It was a uh, teddy bear in the uh, uh, end of your explanation. Ah, that's T. That's T. T, yeah. Yeah. T. Uh, T. Why is he his job? T is my cameraman, so or my camera bear. So so T is always behind the camera. Oh. <laughs> People are gonna think I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's an intellectual relationship with a bear, not a sexual relationship. Yeah. Completely platonic. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I, I, I have no other friends, so uh, they keep me company. <laughs> I have kitties, yes, but my, my kitties annoy me. <laughs> okay, I'm going to finish up today's Hangout. It's getting too crazy. Um, but I really appreciate everybody's participation. And uh, like I said, your enthusiasm is very important to me. It keeps me going. Um, and I do know that many of you uh, are busy or you know, sometimes you have a really busy week or a really busy month and it's difficult to study the lessons. But uh, whenever you have time, just turn the lesson on. Even when you're doing dishes, just turn the lesson on on your computer and turn the volume up and wash the dishes. Just have some English flowing in your head, uh, especially the answers video and the explanation video. Uh, listen to those, and uh, I, I guarantee uh, you'll you'll get many benefits. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. For okay. okay. Thank you. Irina, say hi to your husband. Bye, bye, everybody. Take care, Andre. Okay. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Okay, See you, Andre. Thank you. Bye, bye.